Hey, what's up guys? Boba Rail here, and today me and Chris are doing a cooperative game review on Second Extinction. If you haven't heard of it, it's a semi-open world co-op FPS game where you fight massive hordes of dinosaurs. The reason we decided to check it out is because it just launched on Xbox as a game preview and it's free with Xbox Game Pass. It's also made by the same people who made Generation Zero, which is a pretty interesting and cool game in its own right. Anyways, here I'll pass the baton to Chris and he'll tell you all of his thoughts on the game. Hey everyone, Chris here, and uh, I'm going to give some of my opinions on my thoughts on Second Extinction. I've been playing it a decent amount ever since I downloaded it to try to get a good feel of it, and I really like the concept, you know, it's basically like World War Z but with dinosaurs, and it's a lot of fun to just shoot hordes upon hordes of dinosaurs. Um, I really like the variants that are in the game. You have the shield dinos that have their little arms that are plated that you have to shoot them multiple times in order to break the shield. You have spitter dinos that shoot like, you know, toxins and stuff. And then you have the teleporting shock dinos that, you know, can shoot a flash nade at you. Um, and they can also go invisible and you can shoot them while they're invisible. And uh, they also, you know, they're kind of cool. They're blue dinos. And then you also have like the greenish jumping dinos. The point I make in naming all the variants of the dinos is that this game has very large enemy variety within its hordes. And these enemies are really cool to fight by themselves. One of the big issues I think this game has is that most of the time when you're fighting these cool variants, you're fighting them alongside 50 other raptors, which means you most likely just headshot this dino while you're spraying indiscriminately into a crowd, and you never really notice the cool features of each variant. This game also has an issue of a lack of content, with only a few missions in its campaign that half of them are not very good and are basically just you know interact with x do y it means there's not really much for you to do while there are some really good missions however like mine and black site that i could see myself replaying multiple times the rest of the missions are dull and uninspiring and don't really leave much to want to play more of um i really feel this mainly about the dino mission that is the rex eggs you go into the rex eggs to collect the rex eggs and the dino that is the rex can't even leave its cave meaning you can just sit at the cave entrance shoot at it until it dies which is uninteresting and just boring frankly um their final mission of the game which i think is called contact is more uh for those players who like a bit of a challenge with a rex spawning and a lot of smaller dino spawning but honestly it isn't very fun and it, it's just like fighting a giant boss fight that wins by having so many of its boss creatures in it, the room at once. On top of this, the bounty system is not very good in this game, and it, all it's basically doing is much like the D2 system of bounties, you're basically going to be doing this anyway, you choose the bounties you were going to do anyway, and then get an extra reward for doing it, which is boring. And it works in D2's case because bounties are not a focus in the game, Contracts definitely are in this game, and they have some bit of focus pushed on them as being a source of something to do. A lot of my complaints would be okay if the grind for the game was a lot easier, but most weapons, in order to get the full usability out of them, you have to put in hours of gameplay when really there isn't hours of gameplay to put in. Having to replay campaign missions that are boring and uninspiring, or replaying the two campaign missions that are cool over and over again so you can get a weapon that makes it so you can at least somewhat handle contact, isn't fun and, and leaves a lot to be desired. I want to also state that I adore the game, and I had a lot of fun when I was playing in solos, uh, especially on missions as I've already mentioned, like Black Sight and the Mine mission. However... There is a huge issue when it comes to duos and trios. The enemy numbers that spawn gets violently out of hand, and it's not fun anymore. When I play solos, there's probably max 30 to 40 dinos on my screen at once. When I play duos, that number can hit 100. And I might be exaggerating a bit, but you get my point. It gets very much out of hand. And this out of hand, this would be fine if, you know the frames could handle it or if it made any logical sense to do so but neither is really true as generally speaking if you're playing in duos or trios um 
there isn't a need for that many dinos as the normal amount of dinos that spawn should be a decent amount enough to handle for the three of you if they just increased its HP a bit. And I, as I mentioned already, the frames really do drop the more dinos that spawn, but Bobo's going to cover that a bit more. My overall summary is I think this game has a lot going for it, and I think Bobo will touch on a lot more pieces than I have, but I think one of its big points holding it back is really a lack of content and its misuse of the horde system. But back to Bobo. Water! Send it up. Oh, yeah, okay, I really need this, this water right animation. I'm giving like a solid one. I don't know, maybe like a two. <laughs> need a maybe, a two. maybe a two. <laughs> maybe a two. Just. But you don't like it? Maybe. It, it, no, because like, it... I do like the steam that's coming off of it. And I do like the noise. But I'm not really digging the graphics. It, it does not. It does not splash at all. It does not react to bullets. I mean, it does make. No, it does react to it. It Actually, does not react to fire grenade. It just looks like I'm shooting Oh, it reacts to steps now. Yeah, I mean, it makes a little sound when I walk. It has a little bit of splishal splash. Well, not a splish splash, a splishal splash. Thank you, Chris and Sky. So now I'm going to talk about what I think is probably the strongest part of this game, and that's the enemy design. All the dinosaurs have unique characteristics depending on what variant they are, and each one has their own incredibly detailed models. And that's not even mentioning the bosses, which are also really well designed, like the Triceratops and the Ankylosaurus, who both are rather tanky units, but they have their own quirks and weaknesses to make them more than just an enemy with a lot of health. They have some really interesting charge-ups, counters, and animations that really make you have to focus on them when you're fighting them. The only boss I didn't like was actually the T-Rex, because it played just like a giant raptor with an ungodly large health pool and not to mention a very little loot reward. So these to me were just not enjoyable to fight, and not really worth it to fight either, because all the things that made others like the Triceratops unique and fun to fight just weren't here with the T-Rex. But overall, excluding the T-Rex, these variants and bosses feel really good and I love fighting them. They all really add a lot to the game's combat, but unfortunately, I think most of this enemy design is completely wasted by a crucial mistake and I'll explain why in a second. Now I'm going to talk about what I believe holds the game back more than anything else, and every other negative aspect in this game is easily overlooked in comparison to the frame rates caused by overspawning of dinosaurs. Every single mission requires you to go through these locations, and as soon as you arrive, the dinosaurs will start to spawn, and they will not stop spawning until your frame rate drops to an astronomically low number, as well as they will literally slow down the game to compensate. I remember when World War Z dropped and everyone's question was how can they render this many models and not have frame rates get completely destroyed, and the answer to that was they made their own engine to perfectly fit the task. But this game, while it does have a uniquely developed engine, is probably the worst optimized game I've ever played on Xbox. And the worst part about it is you can see in the lower intensity areas that the game is really enjoyable and can handle a normal amount of dinosaurs, but it just forces so many in the mission areas that it starts to tank. What I see in this is some pretty bad mission design, where instead of focusing on the different types of enemies and the aspects that make them truly unique and interesting to fight, all of the potential they have is lost when they join this massive blob of 7 FPS enemies. In general, they all seem to follow this idea that more enemies equals more fun. So my point with this is that because the game just mixes these other enemy types with giant hordes of grunts, it's impossible to really see or experience them because of the toll that the horde takes on the performance. As well as just shooting at a wall of enemies isn't really experiencing all of what they have to offer. If they just took the time to make each wave difficult by playing to its strengths and enemy design, then it could be really nice. They should make these sections hard Harder, not through mass quantity, killing the frame rate in the process, but by selectively choosing more difficult enemies and combinations of enemies to challenge the player's ability to adapt. For example, right now it's just a complete blend of different types, usually it's something like 80 normal raptors with 10 electric raptors mixed in. 
but I think it should be more like 30 electric raptors or maybe 15 electric with 15 armored, so it's less about clearing the horde and more about countering specific enemy classes so that a mission can feel more varied and enjoyable without having to destroy your frames. This is really something that I think should have been from the start of this game, and it shouldn't be marketed as how much blood and enemies can we fit on screen, because even though this is still in game preview and it deserves some slack in that regard, enemy distribution is an integral piece that seems completely broken, and it's the number one thing I think needs to be looked at if this game really wants to become anything. If your engine can't fit this many entities, then don't force it to do so. This is especially important if they plan on putting more effort into the console port. Work with the limitations in hardware and make a fun and engaging experience with that, because it's 100% possible with the base they have. Alright, so to switch gears from that, let me talk a little bit about the side quests and what really makes this game quote unquote open world. You drop into the map via this weird drop pod stage, which might I add is completely pointless because there's absolutely nothing to do in here. Not really game breaking at all, but strange nonetheless. But once you get to the surface, you'll notice there's tons of different markers that aren't the main quest. These are small things that require you to do certain tasks for loot or XP, but every single one of these is basically the same thing. You can call in an airstrike thing that provides you with some equipment, and you either take rockets to shoot stuff back into space, or run around collecting things to, you guessed it, shoot stuff back into space. All of these only involve a little bit of fighting, but most of the time they just have grunts so they serve no real threat in them. There's one that's a bit different because it lets you trap dinosaurs, but once you trap them, it just shoots them back up into space and you get some XP. In general, I think these have some potential if they made them a little more convoluted or interesting in any way, but I wish they all didn't follow this honestly tedious cut and paste format that just involves moving items from one thing to another. Also, there's these drones that fly around and if you shoot them down, you get a reward. That's it. That, that's all they do. I guess they're cool, but all of these mini quests are really boring and not really worth it unless you're trying to grind for loot and upgrade points. Now let's talk about leaving the map. All you do is just go to a platform, push a button, and wait for the ship to show up so you can climb on and leave. But of course, the catch is it spawns a massive horde of enemies that drop your frames to hell while you're trying to survive. So all of the issues from before are just compounded here. I'm going to close this out by saying I don't like talking negative about games, and my goal wasn't to come off as toxic in any way. I don't think this is an inherently bad game, it's just its execution on Xbox is very poor, and it wouldn't take a lot of effort to really make that miles better. That being said, I'm a console player, and the experience on PC could be completely different, but even so, there are a lot of issues that wouldn't be fixed by a better frame rate. There's still no real incentive to play or do these side missions, and the main quests are all very linear and stale because especially when it comes to enemy variety, there was a massive missed opportunity from a level design perspective. Maybe I'm crazy for hating so much on this game, but I don't think it needs to be this intense meat grinder. Something with fewer enemies and more effort towards each one I think would play much much better, and all my other side complaints are ones that can be ironed out through more content and bug fixes. Chris's final score for this game was a 4 to 5 out of 10, and mine is a 3 to 4 out of 10. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this game, as it's rather interesting and free to play with Xbox Game Pass, so who knows, maybe this concept will get the love and care it deserves, because I really do think that the game's premise has potential, and there's nothing else really like it out there. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Boba Rail and Christopher Beast. If you guys really like this video, then we might end up doing some more on this game, but we'll see. This is all we've got for today, and we'll catch you all in the next one.